Okay, so we are going to find the probability distribution for this binomial situation. We have that P is 0.17, and that makes Q 1 minus 0.17 or 0.83. And we're going to do five trials, and we've got to compute this distribution <clears throat> for all possibilities of X from 0 all the way up to 5. And we need to use our binomial formula. So <clears throat> first, let's start with x is 0 and fill into the formula. All right, so our formula calls for n factorial on the top. So 5 factorial divided by, now we need x. Now since we're letting x be 0 to begin with, we're going to have 0 factorial and n minus x, n minus 5 minus 0, will be 5 factorial on the bottom of the fraction. And then we want to multiply that times 0.17, our p, raised to the x power. So in this instance, it's going to be the 0 power. And then times q, 0.83, raised to the n minus x, or 5 minus 0 here. So it will be to the fifth power. All right, so let's work this out a piece at a time. Now remember that zero factorial is really one. So what we have in this first parentheses is five factorial over five factorial, and anything over itself is one. So we've got one, anything to the zeroth power is one. So our 0.17 to the zero power is one. And then 0.83 to the fifth power, if we put that into our calculator, that is 0 0.393904 Now, as you do these calculations, I recommend you write out all the decimal points that are on your calculator, and then you can round them off when you get ready to put them into your probability distribution table. So when we multiply this, I'll go ahead and round this off. Our answer is going to be approximately, and of course, 1 times that number. So it's up. Oh, didn't want it to be there. I wanted it to be there. Approximately 0.3939. And we're going to round to four decimal places for our table. And let's go ahead and put that one in. All right, now let's go to x equals 1. So we're going to have the probability that x equals 1. We're going to fill into our binomial formula. So again, on top is going to be 5 factorial. That's not going to change. But on the bottom, we'll have 1 factorial <coughs> for our x factorial. And then n minus x, or 5 minus 1, will be 4 factorial on the bottom. And then we'll have p to the x power, which in this instance will be to the first power. And we'll have 0.83 to the n minus x, which in this instance will be the fourth power. And now let's figure this out piece by piece. Now, Let's just notice something about 5 factorial over 4 factorial. If you write out what this means, on the top you have 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That is what 5 factorial means. And on the bottom, 1 factorial is just 1. And 4 factorial is just 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. All right, so notice, and I really need these in parentheses because this is going to drive me crazy the way I've written it. But notice that 4321 and 4321 on the bottom are going to reduce or simplify out of the problem, leaving us only a 5 over 1 or just 5. So we can do our, our um, first fraction easier if we think about kind of what reduces out of the factorial problem. So that leaves us, and I'm just going to rewrite this as 5. 
um, 0.17 to the first, and then 0.83 to the fourth is going to be 0.47458321. And if we multiply these three together and round, we're going to get approximately 0.4. 0, 3, 4. So now let's go to x equals 2. Oh, and let me go ahead and put this in the table for 0, 3, 4. And now let's find the probability that x equals 2 in the same fashion. So we will have 5 factorial divided by, in this case, x is 2. So 2 factorial 2 factorial, and then n minus x will be, in this case, 5 minus 2, so 3 factorial. And then our p will now be to the x power to the second power. And then our q, 0.83, will be to the n minus x power, which in this instance will be the third power. And then let's work this out. So our 5 factorial over 2 factorial, 3 factorial is going to work out to 10. Our 0.17 to the second power will be 0 0.0289. And our 0.83 to the third power will be 0.571787. And when we put all of that into our calculator, our answer is going to be approximately 0 0.1652, which I'll go ahead and put in my table. All right, now let's do x equals 3 in the same fashion. We will still have 5 factorial on the top. On the bottom, our x is 3 now, so 5 minus 3 will be a 2 factorial for the second position, if I could type correctly, that is. We'll have 0.17 to the third power. And 0.83 will now be to the 5 minus 3, or second power. And if we work this out, our first 5 factorial divided by 3 factorial, 2 factorial is 10 again. 0.17 to the third power ends up being 0 0.004913. And 0.83 squared ends up being 0.6889. And if we multiply all of that together, we end up with... 0 0.00, I'm sorry, point zero, point zero three three eight. And I'll put that in our table. Now we still have two more to go. We have x equals 4, which will be 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial, and 5 minus 4 will give us 1 factorial. And then 0.17 to the fourth power, followed by 0.83 to the 5 minus 4, or the first power. All right, and that is going to give us 5 factorial divided by 4 factorial. 1 factorial is 5. And then we'll have 0.17 to the fourth power will be point. 0, 0, 0, 0.0008352.1 times 0.83, and this will be approximately 0 0.0035. 
And then finally, x is 5. We will have 5 factorial over 5 factorial, 0 factorial. And then we'll have 0.17 to the fifth power this time. And then 0.83 to the zero power. All right, so that is going to give us, it's going to give us 1 for 5 factorial over 5 factorial. 0.17 to the fifth power is going to be 0 0.00014198857. And then 0.83 to the first is, or to the zeroth is 1. And that's going to end up being 0 0.0001. Okay, so our second question was, which one is our most frequent case? Well, if we look at it, the probability that is the highest is the one that occurs when x equals 1.4034. So x equals 1 is the most frequent case. Okay, now the last question asks us to find the average or the mean, and we're going to do that doing, using our sum of the x, p, x's that we used in our last section. So if we do that, 0 times 0.339 is 0, 1 times 0 0.4034 is 0 0.4034, 2 times our 0 0.1652 is 0.1652. 3304, 3 times 0 0.0338 is 0 0.1014, 4 times 0.0035 is 0 0.014, and then 5 times our last number is going to give us 0 0.005. And if we add this sum up, we are going to get that our mean mu is equal to the sum of that column that we just made is 0.8497. Now we'll find out very soon if you keep reading that there is an easier way to find this mean than to do this entire process that we just did.